Bank Negara is expected to make the biggest cut to the overnight policy rates or OPR since 2009 next week, according to a Reuters poll, to prop up an economy struggling with the effects of the coronavirus pandemic. Seven out of ten economists polled by the Newswire expect the central bank to reduce the key interest rate by 50 basis points to 2%, matching the historic low set in 2009 during the global financial crisis. One saw a smaller cut of 25 basis points, while two did not expect any change. Quoting Prakash Sakpal, an economist with ING, Reuters says the unprecedented crisis posed by the outbreak may push Bank Negara to slash its policy rates even further below 2% moving forward in a bid to soften the impact. Earlier this week, CGS CIMB Securities said in a note that it expects the OPR to be cut by 50 basis points next month and another 25 basis points in the second half of 2020. OCBC Bank economist Welian Wiranto disagrees. In his report today, he says the economy is simply not ready to absorb the rate cut now due to the six-month loans moratorium. He adds that there are potential side effects to consider, such as the ringgit's trajectory and the continued health of the banking sector. Bursa Malaysia's net profit for the first quarter FY20 jumped 38% to 64.73 million ringgit thanks to higher revenue as it saw increased trading activities in the securities and derivatives markets. Revenue for the quarter was 19% higher at 150.75 million ringgit. Bursa Malaysia CEO Datuk Muhammad Umar Swift notes that the COVID-19 pandemic has had a profound impact across all industries. Going forward, the bourse operator will adjust its approach accordingly and introduce appropriate measures to ease the financial burden of capital market participants and help the market recover in a speedier fashion. Umar adds that Bursa remains confident in its strategy to enhance market attractiveness and vibrancy through initiatives that are in place that include efforts to broaden its product and service offerings as well as measures to strengthen its ecosystem. Sapura Energy, which booked a massive 4.23 billion ringgit net loss for the fourth quarter of FY20, expects another two challenging years, as this year's unprecedented oil slump delays its recovery path. CEO Tan Sri Shahril Shamsuddin says project postponements have become inevitable. However, he believes that Sapura Energy is on a better footing than during the 2014 downturn thanks to the paring down of debts and rationalisation of its operations in the last few years. The oil and gas services group expects the oil market's supply-demand dynamics to stabilise within 18 to 20 months from now, after which oil majors' capital expenditure will return. Shahril adds that the group's assets are well-suited for areas of growth once these challenging times have been rectified. In that sense, he says Sapura Energy is in a very nice spot and that its challenge right now is to weather the next two years. Blue Ink Media, a publishing stalwart with 19 lifestyle titles in its portfolio, will be ceasing operations effective today as losses continue to mount in the past two months. In an internal memo seen by The Edge, the publisher of titles, including Clio and Harper's Bazaar, said this will entail stopping all its print and digital publications. Blue Ink Media CEO Datin Azliza Tajuden said the company had already been under tremendous challenge from the digital disruption over the past few years. And with the current COVID-19 crisis, the group expects to continue bleeding for the next few months. A source told The Edge that the company is now focused on its liquidation and no new print orders will be sent out. Once things are stable, the source says the company will start thinking about the business moving forward, noting, among others, that it has invested heavily in its digital assets, which have shown growth over the past few years. The lifestyle publisher employs some 180 people. However, it is unclear if all of Blue Ink's employees will be retrenched.
ride-hailing and food delivery platform Grab is reportedly asking its staff across the region to go on no-pay leave, reduce their working hours or take sabbaticals. Meanwhile, its senior executives are reducing salaries by up to 20%. Quoting a Grab spokesperson, Deal Street Asia reports that the company is taking proactive measures to manage its cost base to focus on capital efficiency. With restrictions on movement and business activity in Southeast Asia, the spokesperson said the measures would allow the Singapore-based firm to flexibly adjust up or down its resource needs, depending on the depth and duration of the pandemic.